sir. Good morning. I've been to plenty of conflict zones, but never on a boat full of chickens. It's taking supplies to a small village in the Spratly Islands. That's the centre of one of Asia's most volatile disputes, with six countries fighting over undersea oil fields. We've been allowed to come along for the ride. We have really lucked out here. I have been trying to get to the Spratly Islands for 20 years. It is such a sensitive area and it's normally completely off limits to Western media. And that's one of the remarkable things about this conflict. It has simmered for decades, it's regularly put the region on the brink of war, but outside of Asia, few people have even heard of the islands and almost nobody's seen them. This is going to be quite a trip. The Spratly Islands are a smattering of islets, reefs and sandbars in the South China Sea. They have no value in themselves, but they're believed to be surrounded by vast oil and gas beds. We're heading to the main Philippine-controlled island, Pagasa, and we'll be sailing through hostile waters. Vietnam, Malaysia, Taiwan and Brunei also claim some of the islands, and China reckons it owns the lot, right up to its neighbour's shores. And that's where this conflict is really getting serious. Because China claims the whole of the South China Sea, probably because the name is South China Sea. Uh, Eugenio Bito Onon is mayor of the land claimed by the Philippines. His municipality, called Kalayan, has just 150 residents. But he believes the oil could transform his impoverished nation. We, we call our Kalayan Island group as the submerged Saudi Arabia of the Philippines. The Spratly Islands have only ever had one outing in popular culture, and that was back in the 90s, when the great thriller writer Tom Clancy penned this book, SSN, the code for nuclear-powered attack submarines. Just to quote the back cover, China has invaded the oil-rich Spratly Islands. The American response has been swift and deadly, and the Third World War has begun. Clancy was so taken with the idea of it, he even turned it into a CD-ROM video game. This is Greg Hayes at the Pentagon. In a shock move, China has launched an all-out assault on the Spratly Island chain in the South China Sea. We have reports that Chinese forces have overrun positions maintained by other nations who claim the islands as their own. The game let computer nerds command US submarines to sink the Chinese fleet. In real life, the only serious fighting has been between China and Vietnam. In 1988, they fought a brief but bloody skirmish on a disputed reef. More than 60 Vietnamese died in what China held as a great victory. Diplomacy stopped further bloodshed, but this year relations have deteriorated dramatically. On May 7th, Chinese maritime forces rammed a Vietnamese ship in disputed islands north of the Spratlys. Vietnam was trying to stop China installing an oil rig. Both sides fired on each other with water cannon. By all kinds of assertiveness, China is doing a lot of things. Maybe not just by bullying around the uh, fishermen or small navies. China has been trying to squeeze the Philippines out of the Spratlys and seize every unoccupied landmass. It's built a huge installation on Mischief Reef, an underwater shoal it took from the Philippines in 1994. Now, this is Mischief Reef, and it's an atoll. It's not even an island. The Chinese constructed uh, first a fisherman shelter. Later on, uh, a three-storey high garrison. They put 
a basketball court, there's already a wind generator. So they've been just built above the, the sea level? Yeah, above the reef. Malaysia and Vietnam have followed China's lead, building reef bases that would look at home in a James Bond film. You see the premises of the hotel, and you see the swimming, swimming pool. <laughs> There's a swimming pool and a jetty board. You don't have that on your islands, do you? <laughs> Just the <in> big. <laughs> to the mayor's despair, the only country building hardly anything is the cash-strapped Philippines. This is Pagasa, our pristine, beautiful island, waiting for development. <laughs> After two days at sea, we stop off at one of the Philippines islands called Lawak. Rather than no expense being spared, it looks like no expense has been spent. Uh, oh. <laughs> there are just a few marines living rough on a ration of six glasses of water a day. But this is luxury compared to conditions at a neighbouring marine base seven nautical miles away. It's on a sandbar. But there's a structure. Uh, concrete structure wow. where they are accommodated. So that's where they the sleeping quarters. On a sandbar. Yeah. Back on the boat, conditions aren't much better. Jacqueline Morales is the village school teacher on Pagasa. With three tired children of her own, the trip home is anything but restful. Very difficult for me to to stay in this uh, shed because of condition, very hot. It takes a dose of patriotism to move to a speck of disputed land in the middle of the ocean. As a teacher, isang malaking uh, bahagi siguro na nandoon ako na magstay yung school na kinatatakutan ng Chinese na ayaw na ayaw kasi nila na magkaroon ng school doon para magkaroon ng civilians na uh, magstay doon sa lugar. By the morning of day three, we're in the middle of disputed territory. A Filipino Navy frigate shadows us as we approach land occupied by Vietnam and China. Sometimes they're literally side by side. This is the islet of Parola. There's a small detachment of Filipino Marines drilling against Chinese attacks. The Philippines used to also have marines on the neighbouring island of Pugard, less than three kilometres away. But in 1975, Vietnam seized it. Now, the way this side tells it is that one day the Filipino marines left the island to go on patrol, and the Vietnamese, who'd been watching and waiting offshore, took the chance to sweep in and claim possession. And they have been there ever since. And the lesson drawn from that is that no matter what you argue about law or sovereignty, if you want to control the Spratly Islands, you have to occupy them. Yeah, well, the soldiers are saying they have six... Mayor Eugenio has watched sadly as Vietnam builds multi-storey structures and a harbour on Pugard, while Parola remains a collection of beach huts. He says money earmarked for his islands has disappeared into politicians' pockets. We belong to the poorest municipality. Uh, I'm not a national government uh, chief executive. I believe that the national government uh, should exist to support the local government. It's now that, uh, that's what I'm doing now. Uh, yeah. Just really asking them to help me. Yeah. Um, because my vision for Kalayaan is uh, to develop this for marine fisheries, a spatial zone for marine fisheries and tourism. Four hours later, we finally catch sight of Pagasa. The passengers are a mixture of council workers and returning residents. At 37 hectares, it's the largest Philippine-controlled island, 
with a dirt airstrip for the adjoining military base. But surrounded by rusting wrecks, it looks almost as neglected as Parola. I think you need a jetty. It's supposed to be a jet, are you seeing here? It's a causeway. Yeah. Never finished. Oh dear. Since 1997. Even the smaller boat can't dock in the shallow water, so everything has to be carried the last 30 metres. This is not an easy place to get to. Unlike on some of the other countries' islands, there's no luxury hotel here. In fact, there are no facilities for visitors at all. Not that it really matters. After four days on the boat, this feels like luxury. Enthusiastic council workers start early. They have a host of new projects to get up over the next two weeks, including the first mobile phone tower. The arrival of the supply boat has temporarily doubled the population. Before the 1950s, these islands were completely uninhabited. The Philippines only began settling civilians here in the late 70s to push its case for sovereignty. The village is only now starting to look like a real community. Mayroon tayong doktora dyan, may medical mission. Mga mga lahat ng nasa village. Mayor Eugenio has stretched his meagre budget to build some new houses. But it's a shadow of what he'd like to do. If I compare our development to the rest of the islands in the South China Sea, I think the side for the West Philippine Sea is all the least developed. And sometimes, uh, you know, and that gives us uh, frustration. Great frustration. Yeah. After more than three decades, there are just a few dozen houses on sandy tracks. The only power comes from generators and there's no running water. We caught up with Jacqueline Morales and her husband catching up on laundry from the four days at sea. I'm so glad we are here in our home today. Mm -hmm. We can go. I'm going to go to the ship. I'm going to go to the ship. I'm going to go to the ship. I'm going to go to the family has quickly settled back into Ireland life, the kids catching the evening meal. But she's all too aware of how precarious the community's future is if China continues to squeeze. Ako na nagwo-worry ako sa kanila kung ano man ang mangyayari. Siyempre, alam naman natin na kung gaano sila kaintersado dito sa island na ito. Siyempre, kahit ano, minsan magagawa nila kahit anong gusto nilang gawain, kahit may tao pa dito. Pero bahala na yung Panginoon. None of that worries her daughters, of course. For them, Pagasa is close to paradise. The concrete bunkers at the end of the beach are a testament to the long-running hostilities. They were built in the early 70s, a few years after the military base was established. Ito kayo nupakan ka dito ng ano ng M16 di ka talaga. Oh, ito kayo nito siya. Ay kung biglang nagkos dito tapo malbog dito pagganon. Unable to match China's growing military, 
the Philippines has asked the UN to arbitrate. Beijing has refused to take part in the case and is already exploiting the disputed resources. That's the, the boats used for hauling clams and corals. There's a constant rumble of Chinese dredges on the outer reef. They run 24 hours a day, crushing the coral. Mainly, they're using that, they're turning that into powder, and then they use that as fillers mm -hmm. for boat building. Mayor Eugenio wants to turn the reef into a protected marine park. Now he's worried there'll be no coral or fish left. If you go there, there's no more rocks. It just has become turned into a uh, sun. OK, well, it's just an hour before high tide and we're about to head over the reef overnight to the most important part of where we want to get to, and that's Ayungan Shoal. That is a Filipino marine base on a scuttled ship on a submerged reef, and it's being very highly contested by China. Now, if indications of the last few months are anything to go by, it seems Chinese Coast Guard vessels will try to stop us. So. Now comes the hard part. The Chinese Coast Guard has blocked the last three supply boats trying to make this journey. We'll be taking a smaller, faster boat to try to evade them. So we'll ask him what's going to happen if they do chase us, what will the captain do? By late morning, we're in sight of the disputed reef, which the Filipinos call Ayungan Shoal. Our one advantage is that the Chinese ships are stationed on the other side of the reef, ready to block supply boats coming from the mainland. By the time their radar spots us, they have to move right around the reef to stop us. We have just seen two Chinese vessels bearing down at us, so the captain's asked us to stay out of view. Um, and we'll try just to pass ourselves off as a fishing boat. Pass on through, we'll see. We can now see our destination, a scuttled ship called the Sierra Madre. The Coast Guard vessel continues to race towards us, billowing exhaust as it tries to close the gap. But it's too late. Well, it looks like we've made it because while well, the, the Coast Guard vessel is still coming towards us at speed, the reef here now is so shallow that I don't think they can follow us. <laughs> at first glance, Sierra Madre looks like it belongs in a wrecking yard. On closer inspection, it looks even worse. The US-built ship carried tanks in World War II and last saw service in Vietnam. Thank you very much. It was in bad shape when the Philippines scuttled it here in 1999. Now it's literally falling apart. Ready? Ready. 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 The Marines are making the best of it. They've caught enough reef fish that morning to welcome us with a banquet. Mm. That's good. Vinegar, onions, onions, and. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. But a military unit can't survive on fish. It needs generator fuel, maintenance equipment, medicine, and above all else, water. So you were going out to try to meet the boat that was bringing you the provisions, or were you on the boat with the provisions? 
Second Lieutenant Earl Palmer is the detachment commander. After lunch, he shows me what happened when they tried to come here with supplies a month earlier. It took two attempts to break through. Probably ang barko namin mawasak and uh, the lives of my men as, uh, is in danger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Chinese ships circle the reef like sharks, coming to within 200 metres of the Sierra Madre. China claims it's the Philippines breaking the law, occupying the reef it calls Renai, in the islands it calls Nan Sha. Gusto nila sir na alisin dito ang barko sir at saka itong ayungin shoal kasi sir kiniklaim nila na this is a People's Republic of China property sir but uh, the in fact sir uh, ayungin shoal is the territory of the Philippines. Lieutenant Palmer and his men are combat veterans from the war against Islamic insurgents in Mindanao. Their main operation now is finding food. Every morning they head out to spear fish under the watchful eyes of the Chinese. Their other battle is keeping busy. There's not much to do on the ship and you have to watch where you walk. Injuries from falling through the deck are common. My plan on gobierno ito sir na i-repair ito. Yung sir yung supplies and equipments for repair sir. Hindi nakapasok ah uh, dahil uh, hinarang sir ng uh, Chinese Coast Guard. Ayun sir hanggang ngayon hindi na repair ito sir. Once a month, there's a small relief mission that China hasn't worked out how to block. The parcels are dropped as close as possible to the ship, sometimes even on it. Staff Sergeant Alan Cisneros heads out on a small raft to collect the strays. So, are you getting a bit sick of fish? No. My and I, what we call, every day we eat fish. So, I need another uh, to open our tank. Fish for breakfast, fish for lunch, yes. fish for dinner. Yes. <laughs> all fish, all fish. Got to love fish. those fish. Now, maybe inside this box, <laughs> have a meat or a beef. Then at the base is another. Moments like this are a rare break in the monotony of life on a ship that never moves. Do you ever wish the Philippines would give you a slightly better ship to live on? I cannot answer that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. What is this? Oh. Up in the mess room, the parcels are open greedily. The contents appear aimed more at morale than blockade busting. It's telling what passes for luxury. It's pan bacon. This is pan bacon good. There's one for you and one for you and one for me. There's even Jollibee fried chicken from the Philippines' very own junk food chain. Very good, nice. Tastes good, look. One small package provokes the most intense reaction. It has letters and drawings from school children on the mainland. I feel sad, lonely, but I'm proud to be here to defend our territory. Mahal kong mga sundalo, salamat sa inyong kabayanihan sa pagbibantay ng ating teritoryo. 
maging inspirasyon kayo naming mga bata, mahal namin kayo from Jun Luis Garcia. This is on so many levels an absurd dispute. The reef could be a marine park and a diving magnet. Or if all the nations could agree, it could be a properly managed oil field that didn't destroy the environment. Instead, it's closed to outsiders with a small band of marines stuck on a ghost ship surrounded by Chinese ships patrolling day and night. In the meantime, the reefs are being destroyed on an industrial scale. We left the next morning before dawn, hoping to again escape unscathed. Thank you! The Coast Guard let us pass. But in the days that followed, the dispute over the South China Sea worsened, with anti-Chinese riots breaking out across Vietnam. This conflict has been lying dormant and unseen for a generation. Now it threatens to erupt as a rising China turns its power to the sea.